Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Monday the 28th of October. India's PM Modi and Spanish counterpart inaugurate C-295 aircraft plant. Ex-US President Trump calls exit from Afghanistan horrible mistake. And Bangladesh ex-army chief, a former minister, summoned over alleged genocide. And now for all the details. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi along with his Spanish counterpart Pedro Sanchez on Monday jointly inaugurated the Tata Aircraft Complex for manufacturing C-295 aircraft at Tata Advanced Systems Limited campus in Vadodara. Addressing the gathering, the Spanish Premier said with the inauguration of the facility, world is witnessing how an extraordinary project between two emblematic companies becomes a reality. This partnership between Airbus and Tata will contribute to the progress of the Indian aerospace industry and will open new doors for the arrival of other European companies, he added. Echoing the sentiments, PM Modi said the facility will strengthen India-Spain relations as well as make in India, make for the world mission. He further said India is witnessing unprecedented growth and transformation in the aviation sector and this ecosystem will pave the way for made in India civil aircraft in the future. 56 aircraft are there under the C-295 program, of which 16 are being delivered directly by Airbus from Spain and the remaining 40 are to be made in India. Tata Advanced Systems Limited is responsible for making these 40 aircraft in India. Today, we are not only officially inaugurating a cutting-edge industrial facility. Today, we're also witnessing how an extraordinary project between two emblematic companies becomes a reality. In the last one year, the Bharat's aviation sector has unprecedented growth and transformation. We have seen सैकड़ों छोटे शहरों पर एयर कनेक्टिविटी पहुंचा रहे हैं हम पहले से ही भारत को एविएशन और एमआरओ डोमेन का हब बनाने के लिए काम कर रहे हैं ये इकोसिस्टम भविष्य में मेड इन इंडिया सिविल एयरक्राफ्ट का रास्ता भी बनाएगा Later in the day, both the leaders held delegation level talks at the Lakshmi Vilas Palace in Vadodara. Sanchez is on his maiden visit to India, which is also the first by any Spain Prime Minister in last 18 years. Sanchez is also scheduled to visit Mumbai, where apart from official engagements, he will interact with trade and industry leaders, think tanks and the film industry before embarking for Spain. An Indian Army vehicle was attacked on Monday morning in India's Jammu and Kashmir region. In a statement, the White Knight Corps said the attack took place on convoy near Asan area in the Sundarbani sector of Jammu region. Swift retaliation by own troops ensured foiling of the attempt, ensuring no injuries. The area has been cordoned off and a search operation to neutralize the terrorist is ongoing, the statement added. Security officials have said three terrorists are believed to be spotted near the attack site, a search operation for whom has been launched. The Monday attack is the third attack within last 10 days. Earlier on Thursday, an army convoy was attacked in Kashmir region, killing at least four people. These attacks also coincide with the formation of a new government by the opposition India Alliance in the territory. The newly elected Chief Minister Omar Abdullah has termed the recent spate of attacks in the region a matter of serious concern. Moving on, MQM founder Altaf Hussain has condemned Pakistan's 26th constitutional amendment, calling it an open slaughter of the judiciary. A report. Mutahida Qaumi Movement founder leader Altaf Hussain has raised serious concerns over the 26th constitutional amendments in Pakistan and alleged 
that the changes undermine the judiciary in the country. Hussein sharply criticized the rushed process, claiming it was done without proper deliberation and the overnight passing of the amendments amounted to an open slaughter of the justice system. He also alleged in a post on X an audio message that members of key political parties were coerced into voting for the amendments. <laughs> इंसाफ और अदालतों के साथ जुल्मों बर्बरियत जबर का नंगा खेल खेला जाए जहां मकतूल को मकतूल के लवाइकीन को इंसाफ मांगने पे कत्ल कर दिया जाए Following the amendments, Justice Yahya Afridi took oath as the new Chief Justice of Pakistan this past Saturday. Previously, the most senior judge after the Chief Justice automatically became top judge. The new process has also been opposed by main opposition party, the Pakistan Tehreek-e Insaf, of jailed former Prime Minister Imran Khan, which has also said it is an attempt to subvert judicial independence. Former U.S. President Donald Trump and the Republican nominee for the 2024 election this Sunday criticized what he described as the mishandling of the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan, stating that the Bagram Air Base should not have been abandoned. Speaking during the event, Trump called the U.S. exit from Afghanistan a horrible and a major mistake. According to Trump, American troops should have been the last to leave Afghanistan, not among the first as part of the plan. Throughout his campaign, Trump has frequently raised the issue of Afghanistan withdrawal, using it as a point of attack against the campaign by Democrats led by Kamala Harris. Trump highlighted the strategic significance of Bagram Air Base, mentioning its proximity to locations in China where nuclear weapons are reportedly being produced. The Afghanistan exit continues to be a key talking point in U.S. politics, reflecting the ongoing debates over military strategy, foreign policy and national security. In a latest blow to ousted Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, the country's International Crimes Tribunal on Sunday summoned 20 individuals, including ex-Army Chief Ziao Lesan and 10 former ministers to appear before it next month over alleged genocide. Reports suggest at least 753 people were killed and thousands were injured during the students' uprising, which ICT prosecution team and the interim government termed crimes against humanity and genocide. Over 60 complaints of crimes against humanity and genocide have been filed against Hasina and her party leaders. Earlier this month, the tribunal issued arrest warrants against Hasina and 45 others, including her son and several of her former cabinet members. Hasina has taken shelter in India along with her sister and the interim government is being ruled by Nobel laureate Mohammed Yunus. And Nepal's Prime Minister KP Sharma Oli is planning to visit China in November and is likely to discuss the projects underway in Nepal by China apart from the projects under the Beijing's Belt and Road Initiative, sources have suggested. Oli last week completed 100 days in office and has directed officials to update on the progress achieved on Chinese projects in Nepal. While traditionally Nepal's premiers visit India after resuming office, Oli has made the exception in the past as well. Ahead of the visit, the Nepal government has reportedly entrusted a Chinese company to print 300 million copies of Nepali rupees banknotes of the nomination 100, featuring a controversial political map which incorporates India's Limpi Udhara, Lipu Lake and Kalapani as Nepali territories. The map had been incorporated in his previous term as Prime Minister and stained ties with India. New Delhi had rejected the map and said artificial enlargement of claims is not based on historical fact or evidence and is not tenable. 
and the Sri Lankan Navy has arrested 12 Indian fishermen and seized their trawler on charges of poaching in its territorial waters off Point Pedro in Jaffna. The fishermen who had set out to sea from Tamil Nadu were handed over to Meladi Fisheries Inspector for Legal Proceedings, a statement said. So far in 2024, Lankan Navy has arrested 462 fishermen from India. This includes 16 fishermen from Rameswaram arrested four days ago. The prolonged dispute over fishing rights has been a source of tension between India and Sri Lanka for many years as they share an expansive oceanic border without any perceptible demarcation. Fishermen from both sides frequently strain to each other's territory while netting their catch and end up spending years in jails. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.